Okay, welcome back. We will continue the discussions on the existence and uniqueness of solutions of initial value problem. Existence and uh, uniqueness of solution of initial value problem. In the previous lecture, we have seen uh, several examples of initial value problems. Uh, some are having infinitely many solutions and uh, some are having no solutions and others having uh, infinitely many solutions. So, now we will characterize under what condition an initial value problem will have unique solution like the, uh, the problem posed by Hadamard. Once an initial value problem is given, under what condition the uh, system has a solution and uh, under what condition the solution is unique and uh, conditions uh, uh, for which uh, the solution continuous vary, uh, continuously varying with respect to the initial condition. <coughs> so, consider the initial value problem. given by the first order differential equation dy by dx is equal to f of x comma y with the initial condition y at x 0 is y 0. So, f is a function so here f is a function which is defined on a domain D a subset of D which is a subset of R to 2 R is a function of two variables as uh, it is defined on R2 f is a function of two variables x and y. With respect to the initial value problem, the first argument x that is a independent variable and y is a dependent variable. which is of course, the solution we are looking for. So, f is defined on a, a domain D. So, D is a domain in R2. By domain, we mean uh, D is is an open set in R2 and also it is connected, it is a connected set. Any two given points in D that can be joined by a continuous curve which is completely inside D. So, D is a domain in R2. So, our initial value problem uh, given by dy by dx is equal to f of x y and y at x 0 is y 0. So, you have this is your x axis and this is your y axis and a point. So, this point is x 0 point is y 0. So, initial point is x 0 y 0. We are looking for a function starting from this point 
and uh, f is defined on the domain D and to make sure that uh, first of all the solution the initial value problem has a solution we require certain conditions on f. So, let me first uh, state the conditions uh, we will uh, do the proof later. So, for existence So, if uh, f of x y is continuous on D, then there exist a solution y of x to the initial value problem in some neighborhood in some interval say x 0 to x 0 plus h. So, we will uh, prove this uh, existence uh, results later. So, broadly speaking if f is continuous in the given domain the domain contains uh, initial point x 0 y 0 then one can show that there exists a solution at least in some neighborhood uh, that contains the initial point x 0 y 0. Now, uniqueness problem. So, if uh, f x y is Lipschitz continuous uh, with respect to the second argument argument y on the domain D, then the initial value problem has a unique solution. Rather, the solution of the initial value problem is unique if solution exists. And if uh, x y is Lipschitz continuous with respect to the second argument that is y, then uh, the solution is unique. And the third problem stability So, if uh, f of x y is continuous with respect to x and Lipschitz continuous with respect to y then the solution of the initial value problem varies continuously with respect to the initial condition.
pi 0. So, these are the uh, three major uh, solution to the Hadamard problem. So, we will address each one of them separately and we will uh, give sufficient proofs for uh, each of them. See in the existence problem what we require is the continuity of f with respect to both x and y continuous with respect to x and y. Okay, so, because f is uh, defined on the domain D which is a subset of R2 which okay, if f is continuous with respect to x and y then there we can show that there exists a solution in some neighborhood containing the initial point x0 y0. And the second uh, problem uniqueness is uh, guaranteed if f is Lipschitz continuous with respect to the second argument y and of course, continuity is required for the existence of a solution. So, continuity is also required for the existence of solution and uniqueness is guaranteed if uh, f is Lipschitz continuous with respect to the second argument. Uh, okay. And uh, the stability, the continuous uh, dependence of the solution on the initial condition y0 is also guaranteed if uh, f is uh, Lipschitz continuous with respect to y and continuous with respect to x. And uh, we, we will show it and for uh, uh, Lipschitz continuity we have already seen the definition and examples of a Lipschitz continuous function in the preliminaries. Uh, there we treated function of uh, a single variable a function of x only f of x and also we have seen sufficient conditions under which a function is Lipschitz uh, continuous and examples of uh, Lipschitz continuous functions and examples of functions which are not Lipschitz continuous. Now, uh, since uh, we deal with the functions uh, of two variables x and y, we will uh, briefly uh, uh, deal with the Lipschitz continuity of f with respect to the second argument y. A definition so definition one let f x y be a function which is defined on D which is a subset of uh, R to x y plane and is mapping to R let be a function okay, not necessarily linear So, it could be a linear or nonlinear function. Now, f is said to be Lipschitz continuous with respect to y if there exists a constant. call it alpha greater than 0 such that f of x y 1 minus f of x y 2 the absolute value of this is less than or equal to alpha times y 1 minus y 2 for all x y 1 and x y 2 x y 1 comma x y 2 are in the domain t. And uh, if uh, there exists a constant alpha of satisfying this condition you take the least of all such uh, alphas and we call that alpha as a Lipschitz constant. 
So, alpha is a Lipschitz constant. constant of f with respect to the argument y. Now, as in the single variable case, if for d is uh, the all space r2, if for d is the entire space r2, then we say that f is globally Lipschitz continuous, globally Lipschitz with respect to y, otherwise locally Lipschitz. For existence and uniqueness, for uniqueness result when a log, local Lipschitz continuity is uh, sufficient. Now, let us uh, see an example. So, example say 1. So, consider a function f uh, x y which is given by x plus 3 y, where x and y they are on the end there x y is on the end there uh, r 2. So, let us check the Lipschitz continuity of f. So, f of x y 1 with respect to y f x comma y 2 which is x plus 3 y 1 minus x plus 3 y 2 okay so which is equal to 3 y 1 minus 3 y 2 3 times y 1 minus y 2. So, therefore, modulus of uh, x y 1 minus f x y 2 is equal to 3 times y 1 minus y 2 for all x y 1 and x y 2 in R2. So, this shows that this shows that f is Lipschitz with a Lipschitz constant 3. So, so therefore, this function f given by f is equal to x plus 3 y is Lipschitz with constant Lipschitz constant alpha is equal to 3 and uh, this Lipschitz continuity is global because it is true for all points x y 1 and x y 2. So, therefore, it is a glo f is globally Lipschitz with respect to uh, y. Now, consider another example. So, consider the function of two variables x and y given by x square plus y square. So, this two variable function. So, let us check the Lipschitz continuity. So, f of x y 1 the first point and f of x y 2 the second point these two points are arbitrary points of uh, the x y plane that is in R 2 which is equal to x square plus y 1 square minus x square plus 
y2 square. So, which is equal to y1 square minus y2 square which is expanded as y1 plus y2 into y1 minus y2. So, therefore, f of x y 1 minus f of x y 2 is equal to uh, if uh, is less than or equal to y 1 plus y 2 if we can bound times y 1 minus y 2. So, we know that this quantity y 1 plus y 2 as long as these points are arbitrarily varying in the all R2 is not bounded. For all x y 1 and x y 2. Of course, if uh, y is bounded, the y coordinate is bounded, then this quantity is can be uh, can be bound by a constant. So, for example, if you take an infinite strip, this is x axis and this is y axis. If uh, I take I vary y between say minus b and b minus b and b and uh, if I take this infinite strip so if I call this as d so d is set of all x y in R 2 such so that x c is varying from minus infinity to plus infinity and y is varying from minus p to plus p. So, on this t the given function since y 1 plus y 2 is bounded by 2 b. Okay. So, now y 1 plus y 2 is less than equal to 2 b on d. So, therefore, we conclude that this function the function given by f x is equal to x square plus y square is Lipschitz continuous. If Lipschitz uh, with respect to y with the constant the Lipschitz constant alpha is equal to 2 b. So, a function of two variables x and y and we have verified the Lipschitz, Lipschitz continuity and uh, this Lipschitz continuity is local. Okay. So, this is Lipschitz continuous and this function is Lipschitz and the Lipschitz continuity is local. So, this is locally Lipschitz with respect to y and that is uh, on, on the domain we just define d. So, on the domain defined by this set x of, uh, of set of all x y such that uh, x is varying from minus infinity to plus infinity and b is varying from minus b to plus b is an infinite strip parallel to x axis. And we now see a function which is not Lipschitz. So, example of a non Lipschitzian function. So, example 3. So, consider a function 
f of x y a function of two variables which is given by x into square root of y. So, x into square root of y and suppose that this is defined on a domain uh, where x varies from 0 to 1 and y varies from 0 to 1. Okay, so, the domain you are looking for domain is set of all x y in R 2 such that x is varying from 0 to 1 and y is also varying from 0 to 1. So, this is this is your domain. Now, let us check uh, the Lipschitz continuity of this function on this domain. Okay. So, let us uh, compute f of x y 1 minus f of x y 2. Now, we are looking for uh, a condition like this f of x y 1 minus f of x y value of this one is less than or equal to alpha times y 1 minus y 2 for all x y 1 in D and x y 2 also in D for all points x y 1 and x y 2 in D. Uh, we show that it is not possible for this function to have a condition like this. So, this is a question mark whether this condition is satisfied or not for any arbitrary point x y 1 and x y 2. Let us take uh, two points uh, x y 1 uh, I am taking as 1 0 or uh, oh, okay, 1 y arbitrary y. and x y 2 let us take that as 1 0. Okay. 1 y where y is a value. So, where y varies between 0 and 1 y could be any value between 0 and 1 and x 2 or y 2 is a 0 and uh, x is 1 in both points the x coordinates are 1, 1 y and 1 0. Let us uh, compute. Uh, so, the for f of 1 y minus f of 1 0 this is equal to f of f of 1 y by definition of your function. So, x is 1 and this is square root of y minus f of 1 0. So, y coordinate is 0, this is 0. So, this is equal to uh, square root of y and y is positive. So, this I write as y is 1 by square root of y times this is So, times y minus 0. So, if uh, we can bound this quantity by a constant finite number okay, alpha, then it satisfies Lipschitz condition for this point. And we know that as uh, y is approaching to 0 from right side of, of course, the quantity 1 y square root of y it goes to infinity okay, showing that the 
there does not exist an alpha okay, satisfying a finite number alpha positive satisfying the condition if I call this condition a star satisfying star. So, as y approaches to 0 as this is uh, x axis and this is y axis as y approaches to 0 then this quantity 1, 1 upon square root of y that blows up. So, therefore, Lipschitz condition is not possible. So, the conclusion is the function f x y given by x square root of y is not Lipschitz on the given domain D. So, therefore, this function is not Lipschitz continuous I mean not uh, I mean locally Lipschitz continuous on D. So, therefore, um, always to check uh, Lipschitz continuity by this method uh, may not be that very straightforward. Now, as in the case of one variable uh, there are sufficient conditions which ensure the Lipschitz continuity of a function of two variables. So, now I will uh, state a theorem that ensures or guarantees the Lipschitz continuity of a function of two variables with respect to y. So, so theorem so say sufficient condition sufficient condition to guarantee Lipschitz continuity of f which is a function of two variable with respect to the second variable y. So, we deal with sufficient conditions. So, we state this in the form of a theorem. So, theorem 1 let D be a closed let D be a closed domain. in R 2. So, that is a, a domain is it is a, a connected set an open connected set which is also closed. So, we look for a closed domain in uh, R 2 such that the line joining the line joining any points in D lies entirely within D. So, we take a domain a closed domain such that any two points the line joining them should lie completely inside D. Suppose that the supremum Uh, suppose that okay, uh, f x y suppose that f x y is differentiable is differentiable with respect to y and 
the supremum of the partial derivative del f by del y the supremum of the absolute value of the partial derivative of f with respect to y where x and y lies in the domain d the supremum is attained and which is equal to alpha is a finite number if the partial derivatives are you know, bounded in uh, this sense then the conclusion of the theorem is then f of x y which is from of course from d to r is Lipschitz continuous Lipschitz continuous with respect to the second argument with respect to y on the domain D with the Lipschitz constant with the Lipschitz constant alpha. So, the uh, sufficient condition that guarantees the Lipschitz continu uh, continuity of a function f is that. So, function f x y if uh, f is, uh, dif uh, is differentiable with respect to the second argument y and if the partial derivatives with respect to y is bounded or supremum of the absolute value of the partial derivative is a finite number in the domain then the function f itself is Lipschitz with respect to y. The proof uh, is uh, very simple I will uh, just uh, uh, give the proof. The proof is just by using the mean value theorem. So, let x 1 uh, x y 1 and uh, x y 2 to be 2 points in D let x y 1 and x y 2 be 2 points in D. Now, by Lagrange uh, uh, no mean value theorem by the mean value theorem by the mean value theorem we have there exist a number psi between y 1 and y 2 such that f of x y 1 minus f of x y 2 is equal to y 1 minus y 2 times del f by del y at the point x psi. So, this psi is a point between y 1 and y 2 that is uh, guaranteed that is assured because we assume that in the domain D any the line joining any two points that lies entirely inside. So, the for psi is a point uh, between y 1 and y 2 which is uh, totally inside the domain D. Now, taking the absolute value. So, this implies the absolute value of f of x y 1 minus f of x y 2 which is uh, obviously less than or equal to supremum of del f by del y at x i times y 1 minus y 2 for all x y 1 and x y 2 
inside T. And by hypothesis, this is bounded by okay, this is alpha. So, this is less than equal to alpha times y1 minus y2 okay, for all x y1 and x y2 in D. So, proving that f x y is Lipschitz with respect to y with the Lipschitz constant alpha. So, therefore, if a function is differentiable, it is uh, easy to check uh, the Lipschitz continuity if we can find the, the bound for a partial derivative with respect to y. So, let us take uh, the example, a similar example which we considered, example 3. So, let f of x y is equal to x plus y square where x varies from minus infinity to plus infinity and uh, y is bounded by b. So, absolute value of y is less than equal to b. So, obviously, del f by del y the partial derivative of f with respect to y is 2 y and uh, del f by del y is equal to 2 y is equal to 2 times y and y is bounded by b. So, therefore, this is less than equal to 2 times b. So, this shows, so this implies that f of x y given by x plus y square is Lipschitz on okay if uh, we say this is a domain if uh, domain d is given by this on the domain d with uh, alpha is equal to 2 b and at this uh, uh, junction, uh, we know that this uh, uh, the conditions in the theorem is not a necessary condition to uh, uh, for a Lipschitz conti uh, continuity. It is uh, just a sufficient condition. If the partial derivatives are uh, bounded, then the function is Lipschitz continu continuous. That is a strong sufficient condition. But there are functions which are Lipschitz continuous, but at the same time not satisfying the hypothesis of the uh, above theorem. So, we give a counter example. So, example. So, consider a function f of x y is given by x into absolute value of y, where the domain is which is defined on a domain where x y such that mod of x is less than equal to a and y is between minus infinity plus infinity. It is also an infinite strip where y varies so from minus infinity to plus infinity this is bounded between minus a to a. So, this is so, so this is the domain. So, uh, if you look check for a Lipschitz continuity f of x y 1 minus f of 
x y 2 where x y 1 and x y 2 are 2 points in the domain which is equal to x absolute value of y 1 minus x absolute value of y 2 and if we take uh, the absolute value of this. So, this is less than or equal to mod of x into absolute value of y 1 minus y 2 and as x is bounded by a. So, this is a times absolute value of y 1 minus y 2. So, this shows that the function f given by x into mod uh, y is Lipschitz with the Lipschitz uh, constant alpha is equal to a. However, this function does not have a partial derivative with respect to y as it is not differentiable with respect to y at 0. So, therefore, uh, the conditions in the theorem is just necessary uh, just uh, sufficient. So, the conclusion the condition in the theorem is just sufficient but not but not necessary to guarantee Lipschitz condition. Lipschitz continuity of f with respect to y. So, therefore, uh, a given differential equation, uh, we can check the continuity of f with respect to x and y and also check the Lipschitz continuity of f with respect to y to address the question of existence, uniqueness and the continuous dependence of the solution with respect to the initial condition. And also note that Lipschitz continuity is a stronger uh, notion than continuity. Any Lipschitz continuous function is continuous, but lit less than the differentiability. For proving the uniqueness result, we employ a very important lemma which is known as uh, Gronwald's lemma. Gronwald's lemma. So, this will be invoked uh, to prove the uniqueness of solution of an initial value problem. So, let me state the Gronwald's lemma. Suppose that Suppose that f x and g x are continuous real valued functions so continuous real valued functions with a condition that f of x is greater than or equal to 0 and g of x is also greater than or equal to 0 on an interval call it uh, a b. So, if f x and g x are two continuous uh, real valued functions both uh, non, neg non negative and defined on an interval a b then if 
we have an inequality that is f x is less than or equal to some constant c plus k times integral a to x g s f s d s where c and k are no negative constants. Then the conclusion is f of x is less than or equal to c times exponential integral a to x g s d s. So, this inequality is known as a Gronwald's inequality. If f x is less than or equal to c plus k times integral a to x g s f s d s, then f x has to be bounded by f x is less than or equal to c times e to the power uh, integral a to x g x d s. In the first inequality, uh, f x is there on both sides, left hand side and the right hand side, and uh, the conclusion is f x can, uh, if uh, this is the case, then uh, f x can be bounded by a function which is independent of f. The proof of this inequality is so what we have is we have f x is less than or equal to c plus k times integral a to x g s f s d s this we have. And if I take the RHS and uh, denote this by g x so, let g x is equal to c plus k integral a to x g s f s d s. So, this implies that so thus what we have is f of x is less than or equal to g x by definition it is a hypothesis because uh, g x is your r h s so f of x is less than or equal to g x. And also g of a if you evaluate g at a integral a to a which is a 0 which is just c. And if you differentiate g, g prime x is equal to if uh, use Leibniz formula and differentiate this integral so first part is 0 then k times this is k times g x f x. So, therefore, g prime x is um, so therefore, we get g prime x is equal to k g x f x. And um, this f x is less than or equal to g x. So, this implies that this is less than or equal to k times g x capital G x. Okay. In other words, what we have is g prime x is less than or equal to k small g x into capital G x and if you divide this by G x. So, G prime x divided by G x is less than or equal to k small g x. Now, integrating this integrating over the interval A x we have that integral of g prime x by which is uh, g prime so call it g s by g of s d s integral a to x is less than equal to integral a to x k times g of s d s by using the integral of uh, um, derivative by the function which is nothing but the logarithm ln of 
HCS and evaluated at these two points A and uh, X is less than or equal to integral of A to X K G S T S. So, since uh, G of S at A is C, this is ln of G X divided by C less than or equal to integral C A to X K G S T S. And taking exponential on both sides, you get g x is less than or equal to c times e to the power integral a to x k g s t s. And from our hypothesis, we know that f x is less than or equal to, we know that f x is less than or equal to g x. So, therefore, f x is, so this implies f x is less than or equal to c times exponential integral a to x k g s t s. So, this proves a ground wall's inequality. And uh, as a remark, in the ground wall's inequality, uh, you can say as a corollary, uh, see as a corollary in the ground wall's inequality. If c is equal to 0 in Gronwald's inequality, then f of x is uh, less than or equal to k times integral a to x g s f s is d s. This implies that f of x is equal to 0. So, that proof follows uh, very uh, easy easily because if we take uh, for every epsilon, we take an epsilon greater for every epsilon greater than 0, the Gronwald's inequality holds and uh, if that holds then uh, you get epsilon times k integral a to x g s f s. So, that makes uh, that f x to be 0 since f x is non-negative. So, this uh, result we will be using in proving the uniqueness result the ground walls inequality. Okay, now, we have built up uh, necessary uh, 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 tools to prove the uniqueness of an initial value problem if the function f is Lipschitz continuous with respect to y. So, that the uniqueness will be proved in the next theorem. Okay, so, therefore, uh, uh, two things we have seen that one is if the function is continuous with respect to x and y, then there exists a solution to the initial value problem. If uh, the function is Lipschitz with respect to y, then the solution is unique and the continuous dependence will be shown later. Okay, we will see the proof of this in the subsequent lectures. Okay, bye.